Okay, hi everybody, it's me, Bonka922. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm, I think you know what time it is. Um, the live streams are going to happen for Game of Thrones. I found out that you have to basically use an encoder. So I found this, this easy encoder to use. So hopefully it will work. I'm, it's very confusing now with YouTube. I, I just, you know, with live streams and stuff. But, you know, so on and so forth. But this is going to be, yes, the episode one, season six of Game of Thrones. This episode was okay for me. Now, rating-wise, out of a 10, I would say along the range of maybe 7.5 to 8. But that's how far as I'll go. See, the thing about this episode was, first of all, most of the things that happened in this episode, by the way, the episode was called The Red Woman, was, you know, just basically giving us, like, a conclusion to the end of, the, of Season 5. That's all it really was. Um, so, like, and the only person among the cast that was shown that had a somewhat you know, good settling was Sansa. I know this sounds weird, but it's true. Because, let me give you an example. Let's talk about Danny for a second. She got took by the Dothraki. And now, is being told by the Dothraki that she's going to be sent to a temple where all the widowers, all the widows of the uh, widows of the the Kals go because of Drago. <laughs> so she's basically a widower, so they're gonna send her there with the other ones. Okay, there's that. That whole thing just went over my head. Um, then it was a scene with. Let's talk about Danny for a second. I figured to go in a different direction because. Go do that first. Then there was a the thing with, with Tyrion. Um, Tyrion's really nothing. Nothing really happened with Tyrion in this episode. Um, he was basically walking around with Varys, um, talking about. There's a funny scene where he tries to give a woman money for her baby, and Varys says, "Oh, I'm sorry. He doesn't speak Vera, uh, Valerian very well." So it was like that funny scene, but really nothing happened between him. And Varys, they're just walking around talking about the state of the city of Marine. And then they actually encounter, holy shit, their ships are, all the fucking ships are burning. Like, that came out of nowhere. Must have been the, the harpies that did that. Now, that happened. But that really all that happened, Marine. See, this episode was good, but it wasn't great. You know, it, it was more... A lot of things that happened in this episode, it was rather, someone got captured, someone got killed. Those was like the two. Someone got captured, or someone got killed. Now, that happened with with with, with the Daenerys. And, you know, she's basically caught by these Dothraki, and they basically didn't know that she could speak Dothraki. So they, she just surprised the hell out of them. But now that it seems like she's going to be taken to the this Miles, I don't think it's a temple. It sounds like a mausoleum or something that are filled with with widowers of the calls. Go figure that one out. Um, I figured I, I I talk about this first, and then we'll get to the other stuff. Then there was the thing with Arya. Oh my god. Listen, this is bad, okay? There's only like a few people in this show currently who you can honestly say are well off. The only one who's well off in this episode, from my eyes, is Sansa. <laughs> That's it. Arya, we see her, she's blind. 
She's blind. She's asking for money. And the girl who was with, you know, the god, the faceless god, is having a fight with her. She's blind! She can't do anything. She's blind. She gives her a pole. She beats the shit out. Oh, my God. That was terrible. That was god-awful. I was like... <laughs> okay, that happened. So that happened with Ari. The rest is struck into several other categories. We see what's going on with King's Landing, which isn't good. We see what's going on with Dorne. And we have two other scenes. The two other scene things are obviously John, which hasn't been resolved yet, and Sansa. Let me talk about Sansa for a second. Essentially what happens is she runs away with I'm going to say it's Theon. <laughs> it's Theon with no yes. Running away from the, the the dogs and everything, the hounds. And they eventually come up to this this clearing. They pass this war, this 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 river, and they catch up. And they actually catch her out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> Which isn't a surprise because she was there anyway. Because she, you know, she killed Sten. Sorry, Steve. Sorry, SFX Wing. He's dead. Sorry. But anyway, she was in a nearby. So she shows up, kills these guys, just kills them off, and then speaks the creed, this the creed of the old gods and the new gods, saying that she's going to protect Sansa from now on. So that seems now that Sansa is in a good position. She's with Brienne to an extent. I think what Sansa is, it's just... I don't want to sound like a broken record, but this is just the continuation of the continuation of continuation. She's always in a situation like this. It's just terrible. Well, at least she ain't blind. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, we have that situation. Which turns out to be good. She's just with she's with Brienne and things seem to be going well. Then there's Dorn. Well, let's talk about King's Landing first. He shows up, Jamie. Not good news. And it's not good news. She's dead. Mel Sandra. Not by saying Mel Sandra, I'm not apologize. Her daughter is dead. That's two darn bitches. Yay. Now, this leads up to a dramatic scene with the Queen and Jamie. Um, Dear says the F word. <laughs> he says the F word in the show, which that came out of nowhere. But, um, it seems like they're bounding together. And, and, and what was interesting about this scene, I thought, was, was the fact that the queen, she, it's been a while since I was getting The names are not coming to me at the moment. She, um, Mentions the prophecy she was given by that old lady and saying that this is fate and then Jane basically tells her fuck fate, fuck everything We'll, we'll anyone who gets in our way will we'll destroy and we'll do what we want to do He bad more or less what he said now this goes into something else Back at Dord Guess what the king finds out what has happened to You know Jamie's daughter her name eludes me. Guess what happens? The one who pulled it off, the one who poisoned her, she kills the king. Kills the king and kills the prince. And that big black guy. My thing about that is this. Um, yeah. Who's gonna rule Dorn? You? <laughs> Good luck. Good luck managing to fight the Lannisters with no men. No offense, but I don't think you people can actually fight them. Doesn't work that way. So that Dorn thing made me go like, okay, so you killed the prince, you killed the king, great job. How are you going to defeat the Lannisters? I don't see how that's possible. 
I mean, they're in a dire strait too, but you kind of, you kind of shot yourself in the ass there. At least that's what it seemed to me. The Dorn thing just, just came out of left field. Like, really? That's what you're going to do? But that happened. So the Dorn thing is like Jesus freaking Christ. The thing with Arya, the thing with with the land, with the King's Landing. Also, we have a scene with Marjorie. That's really not brought up by much. Um, you know. And then we have the thing with John. Okay. Two things about this thing. Number one. Okay. He's still relatively dead. Seemingly. But... Um, a few of the of the Night's Watch who actually like John take him in, and Davos is there. Melisandre shows up. She shows up twice. One in a one of a what the fuck moment towards the end of the episode, and the second time is when she actually goes there. Now they kind of know he's now. She said Melisandre that she saw him. Fighting at Winterfell in the flames. But that doesn't really mean much. Also, Alistair, this 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 piece of 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 shit on a stick. Yeah. I have only one thing to say to Alistair, that stupid little shithead kid, and all the watchmen. Good job opening the floodgates. Good job. Because I have a question for you. How exactly are you going to defeat the White Walkers? Just saying. Because Jon Snow, he knew about the White Walkers, and you don't know jack shit. So, woo -woo. first one to get killed, that little kid. I'm calling it. He's going to be the first one to get bit by the White Walkers. I'm sorry if I'm, 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 I'm shooting shots at this kid. But your your parents weigh the weight of your parents compared to the weight of all of the people in Westeros. Mm -mm. Sorry, doesn't add up. You just shut yourself in the head, and you're gonna die. Now we don't get much from this episode with 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 Castle Black. Get a meeting. Oh, <laughs> he offers an ultimatum to Davos. Saying that, oh, if you drop your weapons, well, he'll give them safe passage to the south. And Davos, I like Davos now. I really do like him as a character. Because, like, he says, oh, yeah, give me some, give me some mutton, too, because uh, I'm going to get hungry later on. I don't want to starve. So he says that, elephant. So there's really not a lot going on with Castle Black, except just the realization that John died, or da -da -da, until we get the ending scene. This scene threw me off completely. I should have saw it coming, but I didn't really know. Okay. We see Melisandre at the end scene of this episode. She takes off her cloak and is like, Oh, oh yeah, we can see, yeah, yeah. She removes her necklace and I'm like, What? After she removes her necklace, Melisandre, she turns into an old, wrinkly woman. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Now, after she turns into an old woman, she puts the necklace down, and she walks back to her bed, goes into the bed. That's the end of the episode. So I got to wait a whole other week to find your work with John. Um, next week, from the preview... We're going to get some things going on at King's Landing. We're going to get definitely some things going on at Castle Black. See, here's the thing. And here's the other thing I didn't mention. Brienne 
and Sansa are on their way to Castle Black. And so is Ramsay and his cohorts. So now, they're really fucked. Because if Ramsay manages to get the Castle Black and destroys it, bye-bye watch. Because that's what it stated in the preview. And we get like... Like, like I said, we get a scene with Castle Black, with Davos and everything, that then it's going to come to heads later in that episode. Now, I really can't, like I said, seven and a half, maybe eight. There's really nothing to go on in this episode. Just killings in Dorn, people getting captured, blind people, and a nothing really is concluded here. Except for the Sansa thing. Really, nothing was concluded here. Um, I like where it's going, but this episode, it does feel a little iffy. Like, we don't get a conclusion for John, so I gotta wait a whole nother fucking week. Danny's screwed! A lot of people, a lot of people are in dire straits. The only one not in dire straits right now is Sansa. But even that is not even a complete, like, okay, she's okay now. It's just, okay, she's with Brienne, and they're going to Castle Black, but with them they're going to Castle Black, Ramsay's probably going to go to Castle Black. So that means the Watch, they're screwed. I'm telling you right now, they're screwed. Because Ramsay's going to bring an arm. Well, at least I think he is. But the conclusion of the end of the episode, I'm not 100% sure. I don't think... I don't think the necklace is going to be used for John. I want to say it is, but you see, that's only to keep her vite her young again, uh, Melisandre. I don't think that's needed to be used to like bring somebody from the dead, unless she manages to use the necklace to, um, you know. Create some kind of and use the energy of the necklace of the gem that's in the necklace and uses it on John somehow, some way by calling for the Lord of Light or whatever. But it's really skeptical at best. So it's not really this. Like I said, seven and a half, maybe eight, maybe eight. I know people are probably thinking, "Oh, come on." Some people are saying it's dog shit. Some people saying it was good. But personally. This episode gets a seven and a half out of or eight out of ten because kind of confusing in the end. The ending got a little confusing, and there a lot of things weren't left were left open, and that should be the case because this is only episode one. But next week should be very intriguing. Um, of course, it's going to be a problem. That problem being Penny Dreadful appears next week. So. Let's review. Game of Thrones and Penny Dreadful on at the same night. I will have problems. Not really a big problem. I'm just going to record Penny Dreadful and I'll just do a review later on. Uh, live streams, hopefully, I'll start next week. Um, hopefully, this, this software I got works. And, you know, we'll go with that. And I'll probably invite Rick and SMX Wing, maybe somebody else. Who knows? Also, I'll have to contact. Uh, Zoro, see if he's doing a live stream tomorrow night. If he is, great. I'll, I'll join. I'll ask him. You can give me an invite and I'll join. Yeah, that'd be cool. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the story. <laughs> I'm a little upset that we're not getting a conclusion with John yet. But we'll probably get a conclusion by the end of next week's episode, hopefully. But yeah, this is Bonkai922. Thanks for watching. Game of Thrones is back. I don't know where this is going to go. Because this is a volume of books. We'll see. See you guys later. Peace.